yes, I'm Richard B. Cole, and I'm the Ratchet Township Treasurer, and uh, I've been on the uh, Township Board for 18 years, and I've been on the Zoning Board for 20, and I was on the Planning Commission for three. Well, it doesn't get any tougher than this, I, I, I will tell you, because I know that uh, your recommendation for today, I thank you for your work and your insight here, as uh, especially Tim Anderson presenting this. Um, and I, I thank you for your suggested changes. Why do I do that? Because we have a restrictive ordinance right now, and I don't know how that's going to work with uh, the Enabling Act. Um, changes uh, that need to be made or need, need to at least be considered. Um, why I'm thanking you is because sometimes when someone uh, outside of a situation takes a look at something, they come up with something that works better than what we're struggling so hard with here. Um, uh, I, I did take a look at this uh, piece of paper you gave us here, Community Dispute Resolution Program. I'm, not, I, I'm thinking that would be a really a good situation for us. I, I, do, I do appreciate you, although it, those are difficult issues, with the setback and the decimal and the flickers. I'm not going to go into all that. Um, economics, um, it appears as if this is a, is a project is a, is a good goal. I think uh, Mr. Munson went into that to some degree. Um, anytime you take a, a, a a community or an area and you produce something within that area or you manufacture something within that area and you take it and it's sold outside that area and that is what's going to happen basically here your economics within that circle or that area are much more better. Um, difficulty and the difficulty here is uh, it's working with these people who I, I really care about and working with developers. And the other situation is, I'm not even so sure I'm going to get a chance to vote. I, I am a farmer. I have a farm beast. And that uh, and so far, the, our township lawyer said it's not advisable for me to vote. So I've tried not to do that. Um, I thank you for your time and, uh, and the uh, situation here. I, I, I'm glad it's visible for you to, to see and experience because we've been experiencing it. Thank you very much. My name is Larry Gould, <coughs> farmer from Sonic Township, and I'm chairman of the Great Lakes win. Um, the goal that this board established in the early 2000s was to join the 25-25. Um, that was we, Lonely County, was the first county to endorse the 25-25 concept. And that came out of NACO, the National Association of County Governments. Today that's well over 3,000 endorsements throughout the states, counties, and cities. The whole goal was to wean the United States from the import of oil. Uh, I still watch the newsletter. I still, even, even the Board of Commissioners still participate in the 25-25. And even though in the 808, the loss of money for investments, there was a slowdown in, in some of the projects, but yet they are still on schedule. They still believe that the goal of by 2025, that 25% of the energy to be reproduced in the United States. What is, uh, <coughs> this has been the concept of, of the goals that this board did establish. I think they are still in effect. Uh, this project and what it may mean to you, I'm not here to decide how you spend that money. Uh, we talked about creating 10 new jobs during, during the operations. Uh, once it's an operation, it will be assessed. You will, this operation county government will come from that. 
And I would predict that it will save 10 average jobs that's on the payroll. Now we have 300 plus employees in Lowell County. I know that the budget restraints will not allow this county to continue that number. And I do believe that saving a job that you have is probably as good as hiring two new additional jobs with new revenues. So I hope that gives you a wise choice of how to use that money to save jobs. The other opportunity that we did with Great Lakes Wind was we did negotiate the opportunity to keep shares in the development project, and those will be offered to people living in Illinois County so that you will also have an opportunity to invest in this project. We did uh, maintain a, 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 around 10% uh, that we would be able to have local uh, shareholders so that some people, even though you don't have a farm, you live in town, Lady come up here and spoke. If she has an investment she wants to make, she could well bring in more money than the farmer who has his money to her. Thank you. Laura Wienkamp, 6867 Scott Highway, Colorado right Township. I know you're here discussing Ryder at the moment, but Palmyra is not very far behind Ryder. Equally affects whatever you decide and recommend will decide to carry over to my country as well. I first want to say, I believe in capitalism. That's what this country was founded on, what makes us great. But not above all, not above health, safety, welfare, quality of life. Those things are not below making a dollar. And the comment about the lady can get involved. She doesn't want to get involved. Like I told Mr. Gould the other night at the Palmer meeting. I'm not for sale. My quality of life is not for sale. And I don't want to be uh, bargaining with money. I just want to live my life how I planned. I bought a house around the corner for my parents and plan to live there the rest of my life. Now I don't know if that will be possible. And I just want to read you a really quick thing that I hope won't mirror where we'll be in a few years. Anne and Jason Wirtz bought their home June 1st, 96 in a pretty Wisconsin town near, the, near Oak, Oakfield in Dodge County, the kind of place that had people stopping by to ask if the family would consider selling it. They just pulled our driveway, said Ann. They were people who, if we ever decided to sell it, we should call them. Although the turn of the century house needed a lot of work when they bought it, they didn't mind. The Works family planned to stay. Ann and Jason both grew up in the area and wanted to raise their children there. I thought we were going to live here the rest of our lives, says Ann, a mother of four. I thought one of our kids was going to live here after us. This was before 86 industrial wind turbines went up around their home as part of the Forward Energy Wind Project, which began in operation of March of 08. The closest turbine to the works home is 1,300 feet. 1,300 feet. Keep that in mind. Uh, last night it was whining, said Anne. It wasn't just the whoosh, whoosh, whoosh or the roaring. It was a high-pitched whine. And I just don't hear them, I can feel them. She describes the feeling like a beat in her head, a pulse that matches the turbine's rhythm. Last night it was really bad, she said. She knows nights which are going to be loud by which way the turbine blades are facing, and her family dreads the nights when the wind is out of the west. That's when they're the loudest. Jason said he found out there was a wind farm planned for his area from a neighbor he ran into at the post office. He asked me if I knew anything about the turbines coming in, and I didn't. He came home and mentioned it to his wife. When I first heard about it, I wasn't alarmed, said Anne. People are saying how bad they could be, but I just didn't believe them at first. She assumed the turbines would be sighted much farther away from her home, unaware of the controversy over the setbacks approved by the Public Service Commission of Wisconsin. All those orange flags they put in were way back there. I was thinking it wouldn't be too bad. And then when the access road started coming in so close, I said, what the heck is going on? Meanwhile, Jason had been attending town meetings and learning more about the project. The more he learned, the more worried he became. And five months before the turbines went up, the Wirtz family decided to sell their home. They called the families who had let them know they would be interested in buying it. And when they found out about the turbines, said Anne, they weren't interested anymore. The Wirtz family prepared the house to put on the market. And in November of 07, the home, sitting on eight acres, was appraised for $320,000. But this once sought after property would find no buyers. As soon as people found out about the wind farm coming, said Anne, that was it. And once they started building the roads to the turbines, forget it. They'd ask what the road was for, we'd tell them, and we'd never hear from them again. After the turbines went up, interested buyers stopped showing up altogether. 
We tried to find another realtor, said Ann. They list, they asked, is it near the turbines? And when they found out it was, they wouldn't even bother to come to the house and look at it. One realtor told me it wasn't worth her marketing dollars to even list it because it was in a wind farm and she knew she couldn't sell it. Another realtor said they would have to price it. Let me finish at least the paragraph. It was well under 200000 to get anyone to even look at it. At the price we're going, it would be $50,000 worse than what we started, said Anne, and that didn't include 12 years of work we put in.
but the horses were increasingly anxious to get away from the turbines. While Jason, who works nights, wasn't having much trouble with the turbine noise, it was keeping Anne and her children from sleeping well all night. They were tired all the time. They were also getting frequent headaches. And there was trouble with their animals as well. The Wurtz's family raised alpaca and have a breeding herd. Anne says the alpacas became jumpy the first day the turbines went online. Normally they are so calm, but the day the turbines started up, they seemed to panic. Anne says the herd had always been docile and healthy with no breeding problems. Since 